Hello, as soon as I figure out which camera I need to select. How's everyone doing tonight? Thanks for stopping in. Keeping me company for a little bit. So, hey Dave, nice that you could join. Jay, Retro Techie, Will, Bruce from Brancus Creations, Thomas Armstrong, uh, Damian Rieger, hello. Thanks for coming. So, this stream is uh, largely sponsored by uh, Steve from Mac84. Um, he likely will not be here tonight as he is married and has to take care of his wife. So, but he sent me on an errand today to go pick up a whole bunch of crap. And since I had laundry I had to bring up too, I brought the smallest and easiest thing up to fart around with. So, I uh, brought a power book up. So, nice and light, simple, easy to shove in the laundry basket with clean clothes. So, <clears throat> I figured we could take a look at that and see if this is really as crappy a power book as I think it is. And Mr. Prada is saying hi to his adoring fans right now. Aren't you, you fluffy butt? So, as always, Prada has decided to grace our presence because, you know, he can't be more than three inches away from me at any one time. Uh, he's very annoying, but he's very cute and he's very fluffy. And he is a deer. He's a sweet cat. Aren't you, Prada? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, yes, Dave. He's adorable. He's a fluffy butt, but I love him. He loves me too. So he's constantly up my butt, no matter what I'm doing. He's got to be right there. Oh, come on, baby. No. Oh. So, without further ado. We're going to switch to, now some of this is going to be handheld, so forgive me for the crappy vide videography skills here. Um, you know, figure out which camera we got. So we have here a PowerBook 100 series laptop. Looks like every other PowerBook 100 series laptop. It's gray, it's bulky, it's not very heavy. Of course, there's no battery in it either. Um, it's got a nice rainbow Apple logo on it. So, turn it around here. We got your standard floppy drive, 1.4 meg. Feet. Over here, typical where your battery would go. There's no battery in it at the moment. Um, which is good because the batteries in these are NICADs and they're usually shot anyway. I mean, I own two of them. Neither one of them has a good battery. But here's where it gets interesting. So this is going to be why this is one of the crappiest laptops that Apple has ever made. That's the back panel. 2400 baud modem, SCSI, and a serial port. That's it. That's all this thing has. And in case you haven't figured out which model it is yet, which I'm sure Dave has, and I'm sure Bruce has as well, this is the ever-loved PowerBook 150. So... The PowerBook 150 was the la as far as I remember, was the last PowerBook 100 series made. It was a very, very stripped down, cost reduced version of the PowerBook, and to my knowledge, is probably one of the rarer PowerBooks. I wouldn't say it's the rarest, but it is definitely not a common model. I've talked to three people today, <clears throat> and none of them have ever owned a PowerBook 150. I've never even seen a PowerBook 150. So, but 
It's it looks just like any other power book. I mean, there's no cosmetic difference. I think it was just Apple's way of trying to sell a cheap laptop and maybe use up some parts they had left. So, um, it uses some Duo technology because uh, it uses the same memory cards as a Duo does, according to the computer. Um, so, you know, it's a grayscale laptop. It has a uh, passive matrix screen. So, like I said, it's it's definitely a cost-reduced version. This one here is in really good shape. I picked this up for Steve today. I picked this up as, uh, with a whole bunch of other stuff. Uh, one of which was a PowerBook 520, which is actually the other computer that was on sale at the same time. Um, and uh, that was a far superior machine. I mean, it was a 68040, but it also had a much better screen, much more options. So, but... This thing is actually in really cosmetically good shape. I don't know if Jay's watching, but if you could see it, there's the serial number. Um, I haven't tried powering it on. Steve tells me there's. Steve tells me he thinks it doesn't work. So. Uh, Dave, I haven't even checked my emails today, to be honest with you. I wasn't home most of the day, so I drove a, I was, well I woke up late and then I drove a, about an hour, hour out, of, out to go pick this stuff up for Steve and drove an hour back and then it took two hours to do my laundry and came home and just kind of vegged out a little bit before doing the stream, so <laughs> I will look at my emails, so. Um, but, I mean, this thing is in really nice shape. I mean, there's no, there's one little crack in the plastic, which I'm not even going to try to show because it's so minuscule, you can barely see it with the naked eye, and I damn dare tell you my camera's not going to see it. So, uh, we're going to see if it works. I'm assuming it's complete because, I mean, it doesn't look like it's been taken apart, so, um, I didn't get a power adapter, but luckily I own a couple of PowerBook 100s, and I have a PowerBook 100 series adapter. Even though I don't have any PowerBooks to go with it at the moment, because Steve has them. Oh, well. It apparently does something, because it booted up without me even touching anything. That's kind of odd. Well, let's see what happens here. Well, the screen's coming up. I hear the hard drive running. There. Hey. Well, it seems to work. The screen's not the best. It's not horrible. One of the better one, I tell you what, this is actually one of the better screens I've seen. Oh, he said the hard drive's on its way out. Okay. That doesn't, I mean, it seems to be working okay. It looks like it has a uh, Mac OS 7.5 or 7.6 on it. Which, truthfully, is kind of a silly choice for this machine, but I mean, it is what it is. I mean, 7.5's not bad. So the hard drive is named Mitted Ragdoll. <laughs> I have no flipping clue. <laughs> Oops, don't look over there, that's a mess. I'm trying to put this in a position where I can still use the trackball and you guys can still see what's going on. Because uh, there is no ADB port on this machine, so I have to use the trackball. <laughs> ah. Which isn't working. Okay. The keyboard's working. Huh. Well.
Uh, let's see if we can open a hard drive. Okay. Oh, so let's open a system folder and um, uh, let's see your Apple menu items. Open that and let's see what do we got here. I don't know what version of Mac OS this is. Uh, let me go into Apple Extras. Oops. And, hmm, let's see here. Uh, Okay, well, there is uh, not much on here about the Mac OS. I wonder if you'll tell me what version's on here, since I can't get into the Apple menu. Ah, oh, this looks like a 753. Okay. <clears throat> that seems to fit. I wonder why the trackball's not working. Let's try, uh. Let's try shutting it down once. And restarting it. Hey, Luke. How you doing? Yes, the hard drive sounds are quite soothing sometimes. Oh, now it's working. Weird. We should tell, we should give this to Sean because it seems to be cursed. Yeah, there's no battery in it, Steve. I hardly think it needs a pram reset. I think the pram is reset every time you unplug it. <laughs> you just got a YouTube notification I have live stream. <laughs> oh. See you, Steve. Enjoy, enjoy your night with Allison. So now we have a trackball. So now we can now we can actually play around a little bit. Your 140 is cursed. <laughs> I don't know. This is actually one of the nicest. This is one of the nicest looking screens I've seen on a PowerBook 100 series in years. I mean, there's there's like really nice gradations in the in the grayscale. Um, there's no ghosting or anything like that, really. I mean, there's some, but it's, it's minimal. Oh, I guess if I would have looked at that, it was at about System 7.5, and I would have known what the hell system was on it. So let's go in here, and it looks like we got. 24 megs of RAM. Holy crap. No, well, somebody upgraded it. And it's running 753 revision 2. So this should have Apple System Profiler on it, but I don't see it. I wonder if somebody installed it from a basic uh, install. Hey, graphing calculator. I wonder how the graphing calculator works. Oh, you need a power PC. <laughs> This thing doesn't even have an FPU in it for crying out loud. Let's see what's on the hard drive. 
Oh, nothing. <laughs> Looks like uh, somebody just wiped it and just installed a uh, Mac OS on it, and that was it. Portables? About portables extras. Battery recondition? And they could recondition the battery on these. I don't think you can. Battery recondition. An application program to extend the life of your battery. This application works on the PowerBook Duo 210, 230, 250, 270, 280, and 2300, as well as the PowerBook 190 and 5300. Okay. This was written May 20th, 1996. <laughs> yeah, most of these laptops do need caps, at least in the display. Um, Steve just recapped my PowerBook 160, which is actually the, the crappier of my two. Um, I have a 160 and a 165. And uh, I, he wanted to... He wanted to experiment, so I told him to experiment on the 160 because if he if something happened and it got screwed up, I wouldn't get too upset about it. Because it's just a basic laptop; it's not in the best of shape. It it works all right, just you know, and yeah, it turned out perfect. So. Very much on here. It's just uh, your basic Mac OS install. Let's go into uh, Hey Fluffy Butt. Crank the volume up here a little bit. Gotta have an eat. <laughs> No sound in source. The only sound out source is the built in speaker, which is not the best. Power book set up. Oh. Huh. Alrighty then. This is where you should be able to uh, here monitors should just show four grayscale yep four grayscales you can change it to four colors if you want but it ain't gonna make a difference <laughs> and it should be a 600 for 640 by 400 monitor I don't know it's 640 by 480 okay that's kind of cool so you could play games on it if you really wanted. Some games you could play on it. I know a lot of games wouldn't run on it because it's not 256 colors. Not really anything on here to play with. Just uh, your basic, uh, just your basic Mac OS install. Well, that looks funky on a black and white screen. Ooh, bubbles. 
<laughs> Doesn't really matter what I choose because most of this, most of these settings are probably going to be erased as soon as I unplug the machine anyway because there's no battery. And I assume the PRAM battery is probably dead as well. I don't even know if these have a PRAM battery. I don't know, it seems to be working okay. How big is the hard drive? Seven, eight, nine, ten. Looks like the hard drive is about 120 megs, maybe? From the looks of it? Ooh, what's this one? Oh, yeah, well, I guess you can't turn on video mirroring if you don't have a video output. Looks like this doesn't even have SCSI disk mode because usually that's in the PowerBook control panel. But I don't even see that, so it probably, I don't even think this has SCSI disk mode. Yeah, well, your 140 probably also has ports on the back, too. <laughs> Ooh, window shade. I like window shade. Must not be turned on. Ah. Make sounds. I like sounds. <laughs> Window shade was a great, great, great idea. So, well, this kind of s disappointing that not really anything on here, and I can't really install anything on here because I don't have any. Uh, I don't have any software on floppy disks to put on here. That kind of sucks. But, I mean, it works. Seems to work pretty good. Is this one of the ones where you can... No. See, the, uh, the older power books, you could actually turn the screen off. You could turn the backlight off. This one you can't. You just turn it down. You can't actually turn it off, though. Some of the older models, like the 165, I know I can turn the backlight off and you can, if you have a bright enough uh, source, you can actually still see the screen pretty well, kind of like the old uh, original Mac portables. So, so well, there you go. There, there's the PowerBook 140. Ain't much to look at. So, well, luckily I, I have something else to, to play around with. You guys might like. Change my camera here. So, don't worry, I'm not leaving just yet. I'm not planning on being here all night, but I'm not leaving. Not leaving just yet. for everybody's files right before I erase everything. <laughs> oh. 
No, Dave, I don't have anything on floppy disks. Not for the Mac. So, probably because I don't have a Mac that has a floppy drive, to be honest with you. Oh, you know, for as little as this thing is, it is heavy. Oh. Let's see if we can clean this thing up a little bit. Was it just two Phillips screws that holds all that in? Huh. Okay. Oh. So let's see if we can clean this thing up here a little bit. I do want to take it and uh, buff the acrylic out really good. It doesn't come out that easily. Hey, Retro Techie. I did say hi to you earlier, but I think you were gone. Rotate the plastic cams. No, I'm just taking them out. <laughs> well, I was kind of hoping I'd get this. Oh, yeah, there. Oh, there it goes. Well, maybe. <laughs> oh. There we go. Hi. Yes, that's filthy. Okay. I guess that's the power button. Be my guess. All right.
Oh, okay. It goes down there. I see. Oh, okay. Oh, that's just a piece of plastic. It just lays on there. Oh, okay. So that goes there. I see. I've never actually taken one of these apart like this before. This is interesting. Well, you missed the power book. It looks like a miniature Apple store. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, ugh. Well, this looks filthy. Oh, let's see if we can get some of this goo off of this thing. This machine's in pretty good shape, physically, considering it came from a recycling center. Hmm, don't weigh much. Uh, the power book didn't turn out to be very interesting, so it works too good, unfortunately. <laughs> I'm sure Steve will be pleased that it works well, but <laughs> I don't know if he has a, I don't believe that he actually has a fully functional power book 100 series. I know he does not have a functional PowerBook 500 series. I don't have a power adapter for the 500. That's why I didn't bring it up. This thing's pretty heavily scratched on the top. Oh, the tape's coming off. I think these are just scratches. I don't know. They kind of look like they're coming off. Well, yeah, it is coming off. Slowly. I wonder how about if we try a little mechanical assistance. Yeah, acrylic does polish up really nice. The only bad thing is, is it's a real nightmare to keep clean. Especially when you have cats. Of course, you should know all about that, Dave. Yeah, that's not coming out. There's a lot of... A lot of marks. They're like scuff marks. I thought maybe they were just like... Uh, some rubber 
but it seems to be a little worse than that. The apple is pretty scuffed up. A lot of scratches on the top. I might have to uh, see now that I, I can see the entire case. I can see more. I can actually see more defects in it now than I could when the metal was was in it. Like a lot of these scratches up top here, I couldn't really see because the coloration from underneath actually was hiding a lot of it. But there's no cracks in it. I mean, it's not cracked or anything. It's actually fared fairly well, I'm surprised. I want to do this sooner rather than later because um, I probably not. I'm not going to be working at the garage too much longer. So unless I want to use a buffer in my living room, I uh, need to do it soon. It almost looks like that Apple logo is glued in. Or adhered with double sided tape. Well, that'd be cool if you could get that out. Uh, I will probably use some plastic polish compound that I have. However, I may have to get something. I may have to get something more aggressive because of the sheer number of scratches. I mean, I know this thing's never going to look perfect. I'm not really worried about looking perfect. I just like to be like it to be a nice five footer. <laughs> you know, it'll never look perfect, and you know that's one of the downsides to them. You know, when they get scratched, they're usually a pain in the butt to get cleaned up. So, yeah, I was thinking that. You know, it'd be cool, Dave, is uh, put a uh, put a power light in this thing right where the Apple logo is. <laughs> That's the second time I did that. Yeah, I'm going to try, Dave. Um, I don't know how successful I'm going to be. But, I mean, what the hell? I mean, I give it a try. I mean, it's such thick... Yeah, it's just thick. It's such thick acrylic that, truthfully, I couldn't even mess it up even if I tried. You know? <clears throat> I'll uh, probably take that to work with me someday this week. I have no idea how I got thermal compound on this grate here. This this baffles me. <laughs> There's there is thermal goop all over this thing. I have no idea how I got there. I don't think the processor goes down that far, does it? Oh yeah, it does. Oh, well, I see how it got there. That's all over the top of the heat sink. I think I used a little too much. Oh, okay. I must have missed that one, Dave.
Yeah, I got. I think I went a little too heavy on the uh, compound there this time, but oh well. Such is life. I guess what they say: better too much than not enough. <laughs> I guess there's no there's no way you can uh, no it looks like it's riveted uh, I was thinking it'd be awesome if you could find a way to mount this inside of here like that well up and have it all exposed no I'm not putting RGB lights I don't like RGB lights But if you really think about it, that would look kind of wild, don't you think? So you can see the inside of it. I just think that would look pretty freaking cool. If I could find a way to, to do that. I mean, the front wouldn't be, the front wouldn't be too terribly exciting, but the rest of it would be. You know? Hmm. See, my brain is starting to move and think, and that's terrifying. I'm sitting here thinking about how to modify a cube, one of the more sought after computers. Luckily, they're not really rare. I mean... So it looks like this top plate is riveted to the sides. I don't really need the whole top there. I really just need... I just need the center. Right? Hmm. Hmm. Boy, do I really want to potentially hack it to make it clear? I gotta think about this. It's very tempting. I hate to say, but it's extremely tempting. <laughs> Just because it would look so freaking cool. as a transparent computer. I mean, it's so freaking compact. You know, it's just freaking awesome looking. My brain's starting to wander now. I'm not really, I've never been one, I've never been a modder. What I would consider to be a modder. I've never been one to modify a computer or anything like that, but man, this is just a freaking, I don't know, this is just one of those computers. It's just kind of screaming for it, you know?
Maybe that's why so many people mod their cubes, because it's just one of those machines that just kind of asks you to do it. You talk about this, Dave. Template. Like I said, these aren't exactly, you know, these aren't rare machines by any sense of the word. I mean, these things are all over the place. The problem is, is people just want stupid money for them. Luckily, I know a guy's got like five or six of them. You know? But I was thinking, and see, the thing is, is I'd actually want, like, the center here to be kind of exposed, too. But I guess you'd have to have this here so that the computer could latch in. I mean, I could cut this this top plate, this here. I mean, I can cut this out and, uh, I don't know, just lay that on so at least it looks nice. And then just leave the sides off. Something tells me that they... Something tells me that they probably didn't initially plan to have the sides, the metal case, but they had to have this for FCC regulations because uh, they got to they got to use this to reduce RF interference. So I'm willing to bet you any money that if uh, if anybody found a prototype of one of these, I bet you it doesn't have this metal case on it. But. I don't know, that's just too freaking cool looking. Something I have to beat around beat around in my head a little bit. Uh, yeah, that'd be, I don't know, this thing would just be too cool to not show off. And I mean, look at it, they, they made the top out of stainless steel, for crying out loud. You know, that just screams, look at me. You know. The next thing I'm probably going to do is put RGB lights in it, Dana. <laughs> oh, I've already upgraded it a couple times. I just got done doing a 600 megahertz upgrade in it, thanks to uh, uh, Dave Stahl, thanks to him. That's about the limit of, that's, that's the limit of how far I would be willing to push this machine. Uh, without a fan and without an updated VRM in it because um, they uh, yeah the, the stock VRMs were, were very finicky when they were new I mean I've run across quite a few of them that are dead over the years so no I wouldn't do I don't think I would do RGB lights I mean, I wouldn't mind having some kind of lighting in it to, like, if I put it in a clear case, it has some kind of lighting in it to accent it, but I wouldn't want a, uh, no, I don't want a freaking RGB freak show like uh, some people have. I'm just not into that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, but, uh, yeah, that's, I might have to think that out, because that's, uh, that's a very interesting idea. I never... I've never thought about doing that. I don't know why. But it just seems too cool. And if I take this plate off here, at least you mean you can see something. Of course, I could take the optical drive out. It barely works anyway. I 
And to my knowledge, I don't think there's really any way you can fix them. I think once they're dead, they're dead. It works fine, it's just it doesn't eject for crap. No, I don't have any stainless steel at work. Dude, I'm not a metal worker, I'm a mechanic. And I'm not even going to be a mechanic for too much longer, to be honest with you. <laughs> My mechanic days are numbered. Thank God. So... I am getting another job. Oh yeah, <laughs> my my electronics parts cleaner. Hey, that stuff works so. though. And no, I didn't steal that from work. I actually bought that. I can't remember exactly where I bought it. I think I might have gotten it from Cumberland Electronics. Yes, Dave, I did. I, I, oh, I thought I maybe I didn't tell you guys. Uh, yes, I did get the job I applied for. Um, I don't know if you, I don't know, I can't remember if I told you guys or not, but I was, um, um, I was applying as, for a job at, um, Fisher Auto Parts, which is actually one of my parts suppliers at work. The manager, who's uh, a buddy of ours, you know, I mean, we've known him since he's taken over the store, he was looking for a, a guy, not necessarily a guy, but a, a person to, uh, help out because their business has really increased and um, I asked him you know I asked him some questions and asked him what you know how much he was at looking to pay and yada 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 and so uh, you know long story short I applied for the job and, you know I, I went in Thursday interviewed with the district like the district manager and got the job so it's going to be paying me a lot more money than I'm making now, and uh, fluffy. I'll have benefits and everything else. So, what Prada? So, um, it'll be a big boon for my health and my sanity, I think, in general, to... Uh, to do this, so Mwah. he's purring. He's a happy kitty, and you could probably see Lydia back on my desk. <laughs> so, yep, here's Prada. So that's what's going on. Yeah, they're cute. They're bad, but they're cute. Blast. The whole body, which makes it oh nice. my lord, Lydia! <sighs> really? Oh, she always lays on my keyboard. She has a tendency to do all kinds of strange things. The other day, I went looking for my mouse and found it in the trash can. She knocked my magic mouse, because I have a trash can, can't really see it. There's a trash can over there against the wall to the right of my keyboard. So she knocked my mouse into the trash can. So I had to dig my magic mouse out of the freaking trash can. Oh, yeah, I've always got toasters on there. <laughs> so. But, so I'm going to call it quits for here. I'm going to just relax for the rest of the day because unfortunately I got to work tomorrow. So I do have Wednesday off. 
Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, flying toasters are, like, the most awesome. I don't understand why they quit making flying toasters. Uh, I mean, really. Who who just doesn't laugh when they see freaking toasters and toast flying across the screen? You know... You know, the screwed up thing is, is now, this computer that I'm, I'm using to stream is a... Is a it's a Lenovo... Um, something. What the hell is it called? The Think Sun? Is it Think Center? I can't remember. Yeah, it's a Think Center M83 Mini. I mean, the thing is, it's it's the size of a late gener late model Mac Mini. I mean, it's tiny as hell, and it runs Windows 10, and that's what I'm streaming from. And there are no screensavers at all. They don't even give you the option for screensavers anymore in Windows 10. You know, so it's like, well, that's that's like stupid. I mean, yeah, okay, so. You know, screensavers don't really do anything anymore, but, you know, it's like, they're nice to have, you know, it, it's something to look at when, you know, you're not using your computer or it's sitting idle and, you know, I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me that there's no screensavers in Windows anymore. Huh, this one doesn't. I have no idea what build it is. It's just Windows 10 I know. That's all I know. About. Uh, Windows 10 Pro 20 version 20H2. OS build 19042.746. Search for it in the start menu. How do you search in the start menu? Oh. Screen. Oh. Turn screen saver on or off. Oh, okay. Bubbles. Oh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> well, let's see your modern. Modern Macs are, let's see here behind me, I got a, a 2009 Mac Pro, single processor. It's, of course, been firmware updated to 5.1, so it's basically the same as a 2012 Mac Pro. Um, my laptop is a 2009 MacBook Pro Core 2 Duo, which uh, is slow and hot, but it works. The newest computer I own is a 2012 Mac Mini with a Core i5 in it, and I have that at work. So... Um, I'm only using this PC to stream simply for the simple fact that uh, you know somebody I knew needed some money and I bought it from them and it's freaking fast as hell. I mean it's a I think it's only a two gigahertz i5, but it, it's a quad core i5, which is more than the Mac Mini is. My Mac Mini is a 2.5 gigahertz, but it's only a dual core. So, let's see here, Intel Core i5 at 2 gigahertz, yeah. It's a, not a 4590T. So, and I'm pretty sure it's quad core. Yeah, it's quad core. So, Um, 
I will probably leave the server, which is a G5, and uh, one of the 2006 Mac Pros there, and maybe set up another 2006 Mac Pro. But I mean, I'm going to bring my Mini home for sure, because I mean, that's you know, that thing cost me like 300 bucks. So I'm just going to leave crap there. <laughs> So, I'm going to leave enough stuff there that they can get done whatever they need to get done, but not, you know, get too crazy. So, <laughs> yeah, I used to use Optiplexes. They're not bad machines for PCs. So, But on that note, I think I'm going to call it quits here. Just, uh, an EMAC. Oh my lord. <laughs> You're crazy. So, but I'm going to call it quits here. And uh, I think I'm just going to go back and chill with the cats for the remainder of the evening. I'm starting to get tired all of a sudden. Oh my goodness. So, you guys have a wonderful day. Enjoy your President's Day tomorrow if you have off. If you don't have off, then I'm sorry. I don't have off, so I have to go to work, so. But, uh, I'm going to call it a night. You guys have a wonderful night. If you're spending it with somebody, and have a good, have a good Valentine's Day. <laughs>